Oh hi guys, welcome to this Money Control live stream. You're watching Opening Bell with me, Nandita Khimka. Well, the setup looks fairly okay this morning, although news from Wall Street are negative. But GIF Nifty is hinting at a slightly flattish start for the index. In fact, it could uh, once again make a dash at that 22,200 mark. We'll have to see whether or not we manage to reclaim that level and snap out of a three-day losing streak. Uh, lots of stocks in focus. Of course, Infosys will be the big, big one to watch out for. Numbers come out today. Vodafone Idea will be in focus as the uh, you know 18,000 crore rupee. FPO has opened up for subscription. Of course, we'll be talking about all these stocks and a lot more. And also, uh, you know, we'll be taking up all your stock-related queries that you keep sending us, uh, you know, on our live feed on YouTube. We'll try and post them to our uh, technical expert and get you a view on all your stock-related queries. But of course, before all that, let's quickly take a look at the top stories at this hour. Wall Street's kids for the fourth straight session after Fed Chairman Jerome Powell signals a delay in rate cut following a series of surprisingly high inflation data. Uh, Asian markets as well trade mixed, but the gift nifty, as I mentioned, is indicate, uh, indicating a flattish start for the Indian market. Uh, perhaps we could see uh, some uh, you know, positive uh, uh, open uh, at the start at 9.15. Crude prices slip over 3% amid receding risks of a wider escalation between Iran and Israel. Brent trades around that $87 a barrel mark. IT giant Infosys likely to report its second quarter numbers today. Of course, uh, second quarter revenue growth may decline in Q4. Uh, you know, Bajaj Auto is also expected to report strong earnings amid robust volume growth and a pickup in exports. Meanwhile, insurance provider HDFC Life will also be reporting its numbers today. And Vodafone Ideas 18,000 crore rupee FPO opens for subscription. The telco raises over 5,000 crore rupees by the anchor book. Investors include marquee names like GQG. UBS, Fidelity and Motilal Oswal among others. Well, just about 8 minutes to go for the markets to open. Let's quickly take a look at the queues uh, you know, for trade this morning. The Nifty spot, of course, shut shop below that 22,150 mark, uh, down uh, you know, 120 points. So, it was a third day of triple-digit cut uh, uh, on Tuesday. The Sensex also shaved off somewhere around 450 points or thereabouts. Uh, you know, the Nifty Bank you know, snapped out of a six-day gaining streak. Uh, it ended below that 47,500 mark. Uh, you know, uh, lots of cues to watch out for today. Let's quickly jump uh, to Infosys then because it will be reporting its numbers today. And you know, uh, it could see a revenue decline for a second straight quarter. So, what are the five key things to watch out for from Infosys's uh, uh, you know, fourth quarter numbers? Let's get, in bo get on board uh, my colleague Debangana Ghosh who tracks the numbers. Uh, great to have you on the show, uh, Debangana. Of course, uh, after TCS's good performance, you know, on the margin front and record deal wins, can we expect Infosys to hand in a similar report card or do you think uh, that you know, it could lag TCS uh, as it has been doing over the last couple of quarters? Well, the analysts are, uh, firstly, thanks for having me on the show, Nadita. Well, the analysts right now are definitely expecting a tepid performance this quarter. Especially if we go by money controls estimates itself, revenue is expected to come in at... Uh, I mean, revenue is expected to uh, come in uh, in negative uh, sequentially. I I mean, rather degrowing or declining by 1.1%. Net profit is expected to be flattish. And even EBIT, EBIT margins might see some improvement, but that will be on the lines of, say, 20 basis points sequentially. Uh, if I had to take a look into the other key factors, so Infosys has been uh, uh, slashing its... Uh, full year revenue growth guidance for the last four quarters. So how it is going to pan out this quarter, what is this, What is the company's outlook for uh, FI25? That is something to be viewed for. Definitely TCS has kind of uh, said that, you know, FI25 is expected to be better than uh, FI24. So Infosys definitely will be closely watched for its commentary on that. Uh, the other thing which is interesting in the case of Infosys is that the company hasn't gone for any campus hiring for the last three quarters. So what is the hiring plan going to be? Whether there's going to be, uh, you know, pressure addition in FI25 and how much is, uh, you know, uh, fresher hiring headcount addition linked to the demand? That is something uh, for to be looked for in the case of Infosys. Uh, the other key factor is obviously discretionary spending continue to be down. Demand has remained sluggish. So, and Infosys, in the case of Infosys, it only um, shares, it only uh, discloses large deal, uh, uh, large deal TCV. So, we'll be seeing what it is going to be this quarter. Uh, the uh, other factor would be, I think, generative AI. 
uh, rivals like Accenture and TCS has already called out uh, generative AI deal pipeline and their revenue expectations, but Infosys is yet to do that. Uh, last quarter, CEO Salil Parikh said that uh, you know they are definitely seeing strong traction in the generative AI uh, AI space, but you know it's still too early to share revenue numbers. So uh, that is something uh, I think that will be in focus this time to see whether Infosys will be sharing its uh, at least maybe at least its uh, deal pipeline numbers for generative AI. All right, of course, guidance and uh, you know generative AI revenues as well as you know outlook on hiring. These are only some of the factors that we'll be watching out for from Infosys Q4 numbers. Devangna, thanks a lot for taking our time and joining in and uh, you know taking us through the expectations from Infosys. Thanks. But let me also bring on board uh, Chandan Tapadia, who is the senior vice president and uh, uh, head uh, research, uh, uh, in head derivatives and technical research at Motilal Oswal. Great to have you on the show, Chandan. Let me first ask you about the IT pack. You know that will be in focus. Of course, on Tuesday we saw a sharp cut coming in on the IT pack, right? And Infosys, uh, on a YTD basis, of course, has given negative returns ever since Accenture's guidance cut. We've seen all the IT names come under pressure. But uh, especially for today, are you, uh, you know, would you be trading into this talk? Uh, how should one go about it? Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, yeah, Nifty IT has been uh, witnessing selling pressure. It has been making lower tops, low bottom from last couple of days. Uh, even at the time of market recovery, we have not seen major movement in IT. And in fact, the sector was falling down. So, we believe that bounce could be sold. However, Infos is already making lower top, lower bottom uh, corrected uh, uh, from 1732 all the way to 1420 in last almost 19 weeks. So I believe that upside is kept. Gold writing is clearly visible. 1480 to 1500 is the major hurdle. Stock can drip down to us 1350. And Cofors is other name where we have negative bias. We believe that this stock has seen the built up of short position and can correct to us 5050 to 5000 marks. All right, uh, that's the view on Infosys. But uh, of course, let's talk about the index as well. Uh, you know, Gift Nifty is hinting at a muted start. Uh, do you think uh, you know uh, the charts are signaling uh, 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 you know a snapping out of that uh, three-day losing streak? And do you do you see some green ticks uh, on the Nifty today? Uh, already, we have seen a corrective move of around 500 points in the Nifty from 22,775 to uh, 22,080 marks, and uh, we have seen. Uh, some sort of uh, recovery from lower levels on the last trading season, but the concern is follow up is now required. It has immediate hurdle at 22,222. If managers to hold about 22,222, then only we can uh, look for a bounce towards 22,400 to 24,450 to level. So expecting some bounce, but hold of 22,222 is very important for the next leg of rally in the index. All right, and uh, the Nifty Bank Index, uh, Chandan, uh, because we've uh, closed below that 47,500 mark. What is the crucial level on the downside to watch out for on the Nifty Bank Index? Yeah, so Ben Nifty also witnessed some profit booking decline in last three, four trading session after making a new lifetime high at 49,000 plus zone. So now 47,777 is immediate hurdle. If we manages to hold and uh, below above the same, then only the up move could be there. So as of now, if moves up to 47,777, then I'll look for a bounce towards 48,250. While on the downside, major support will be at 47,250 and 47,000. All right. Uh, let's also talk about Vodafone Idea, right? The 18,000 crore rupee FPO has opened up for subscription. Of course, the company has raised 5,000 crore rupees via, uh, you know, uh, the anchor book. You know, you have names like GQG, Fidelity, UBS, all these... Uh, uh, you know, companies, ha in fact, all these investors have come on board. So, you know, it is indicating indicating a strong investor interest. 35% uh, is, uh, you know, uh, meant for retail book, right? Uh, price band is 10 to 11 rupees. The market lot is 12.98 and the application amount is 14,278 uh, 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 you know, uh, rupees. Uh, but going forward on uh, Vodafone idea, what is the kind of level you'll be watching out for here? Uh, is there a trade? Should one uh, trade into it now? Uh, the stock, of course, is in the FNO band for today. Yeah, it's in FNO band, but uh, if you look at the counter, however, it is uh, it has witnessed some selling and consolidative movement in the last couple of weeks. But multiple supports are visible near 12 marks. So I believe that 12 would act as a support and so on study. The stock has potential to bounce to us 15.5 to 16 levels. All right, uh, just about I think a uh, few seconds to go for the market open. 
you know, uh, let's bring up the countdown as to how much time is left for the market open. I think 20 to 30 seconds to go. Uh, I can see some bit of green tick on the index uh, as we speak. Uh, 20 seconds to go, yes. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, pre-open is hinting at uh, a positive start. I could, I can see a 240 point kind of an uptick on the Sensex in, in pre-open trades, and the Nifty is also settled around that 22,200 mark. So, you know, we are poised for recovery. The index, uh, you know, is poised to uh, snap out of a three-day losing streak. Uh, uh, you know, just about. Uh, bringing up the nifty for you markets have opened of course above that 22200 mark as i mentioned uh, you know uh, sensex is also up somewhere around 250 points uh, 73200 is where it's at but uh, uh, the broader market stage a uh, staged a good performance on tuesday they were outperforming the benchmarks the small cap index was in the green on tuesday as well and today as well there is a fair bit of strength in the broader end of the market uh, the mid cap index is up nearly 1% let's also see what the small cap index is doing uh, it should be up, uh, of course, uh, uh, similar to what the mid-cap index is doing, up 8 tenths of a percent. The Nifty Bank Index also showing strength, 47,800 is where it's at, a 330 point bump up on the Nifty Bank Index. The advanced decline ratio is looking particularly strong, 6 is uh, six is to 1, that's the advanced decline ratio on the NSC. Even uh, in a declining market, back on Tuesday, the breadth was extremely positive, it was in the ratio 2 is to 1. Uh, so after poor breath of the last few sessions, uh, you know the breath is back, uh, you know, in favor of gainers, and it is hinting at strength in the broader end of the markets as well. The IT pack continues to be under pressure. Remember on Tuesday it saw two and a half percent kind of an uptick, but yeah, flat. It has managed to edge back into the green. Of course, the IT pack will be in focus as Infosys will be re uh, reporting its numbers today. But let's see what the other uh, sectors are doing. Pharma pack is. Uh, cruising along uh, two tenths of a percent uh, uh, higher for the pharma pack fmcg that was an outperformer on tuesday uh, you know extending gains although the gains are fairly marginal uh, metals you know shining bright uh, among the top sectoral movers today one and a half percent uptick coming in on the metal pack so all in all we have snapped out of a three day losing streak as we speak it's a good 100 point up move on the nifty and the sensex also above that 73200 mark uh, quickly take a look at some of the gainers and losers power grid uh, that's the top nifty mover four percent bpcl uh, you know crude prices have eased uh, crude is below that 90 dollar mark now 87 dollar is uh, dollars is where the brand crude is at and bpcl of course reacting to that up three and a half percent hdfc life ahead of numbers up and about two and a half percent Tata Steel, Adani Ports, Hindalco, Hiromoto, ONGC are some of the other movers. On the losing end, HCL Tech tops uh, uh, you know, chart uh, when it comes to uh, the losers. Nestle, uh, Axis Bank, Tech Mahindra, Infosys. So, IT pack continues to be under pressure. Uh, you know, out of the top 5 Nifty losers, 3 belong to the IT space. But looking at the open Chandan, uh, what, uh, you know, what is the kind of uh, trade you will be taking uh, in the FNO space? So, like... Uh, we have seen a decent uh, opening in the market. Now it needs to hold about 22 to 22 zone for recovery to us 22, 350, 22, 400 level. One name which I like is Exide Industry, one of the strongest setup in the last couple of days, continuously making high tops, high bottom. We have seen built up of long positions. So momentum could continue in the counter. One can buy with support of 465. We are expecting a up and up move towards 492 levels. We are positive on the selective defense name, whether we talk about HAL, BDL. So, HL is one of the strongest name which we are recommending from last few days. Technically speaking, it has given a breakout from its pole and flake pattern which has bullish implications. Even the open interest added on the long side. Another defensive defense counter like BDL and other are doing well. So, HL uh, may be the counter which can hit towards 3901 can buy with support of 3680 levels. All right, those are the stocks on uh, Chandan's radar. Chandan, hold that thought. We'll come back and talk about specific stocks as well. But let's uh, see what a Vodafone idea is doing. Uh, we'll uh, play a small uh, excerpt from a conversation I had with the CEO in just a bit. But I want to pull up the charts of a Vodafone idea. Uh, let's see how it's faring on a day when the FPO has opened 18,000 crore PFP. That's the largest by an Indian firm. Of course, 4%, almost 3.5% uh, uptake on this stock. Let's listen into this excerpt. 
uh, you know, of an interview that I had with the uh, CEO of Vodafone Idea, Akshay Mundra. We spoke about a whole host of issues, including the you know kind of solid response it has got from uh, HNIs, from marquee names like GQG, and of course uh, uh, you know domestic mutual funds as well, and also the fact that long only funds have uh, uh, shown good interest uh, uh, in this FPO. He remains confident of the FPO going through, and also talks about securing funding from banks. Uh, you know how uh, you know uh, you know the industry could be looking at tariff hikes sometime soon. So let's listen in to uh, what he had to say. Uh, let me just also add a bit on the anchor book. You mm -hmm. listed down the foreign uh, portfolio investors' name. There's also RWC, which is also a leading investor. Also, they, we have had good participation from Indian mutual fund. So we have HDFC mutual fund, Motilal mutual fund, Quant mutual fund. And also insurance companies like SBI General and ICICI uh, Pro Life. Also, there is participation from HNI, so there's a bit of a diversification. And the good thing about the anchor book is that the allocation to hedge funds uh, is less than 5%, hmm. which augurs well for the market uh, post the closure of the issue. So, that is there. Uh, in terms of what happens going forward, this is a book building exercise. We'll have to see what happens. But yes, the anchor book is a good development in that direction. Well, you can catch this full interview at 10 a.m. right here on Money Control. But with that, let me also bring on board uh, uh, Mihir Vora, who is the Chief Investment Officer at Trust Mutual F Fund. Great to have you on the show, Mihir. Uh, you know, looking at the uh, structure of the market, right, uh, we've seen some bit of correction uh, taking place. But, uh, you know, yesterday we had the uh, commentary from the US Fed coming in where they have maintained the higher for longer narrative. But do you think investors globally have taken uh, this higher for longer narrative in their stride now? We've seen buying on dips coming in uh, at, uh, you know, every, every time we've seen a correction in the market, which is what is happening today as well. Uh, so, do you think uh, we have taken uh, this whole higher for longer narrative in our stride? Uh, good morning. I think we will continue to kind of, you know, uh, swivel between uh, the two extremes of, uh, oh, there is too much growth and too much inflation and then uh, the other extreme of, oh, growth is coming down very sharply and, uh, you know, we need to start cutting. So, this year is going to be very interesting, I must say. Uh, uh, growth actually in the US especially has uh, surprise on the upside. Uh, and inflation also has surprise on the upside. So, uh, growth, of course, is good for the stock markets, but uh, the inflation upside surprise has also resulted in the higher for longer narrative that you mentioned. Uh, so, we have a situation where you have high growth, high inflation, and higher for longer kind of a situation, which means that, I mean, uh, from the asset prices point of view, I think there is upside because stocks always uh, you know, depend on growth. Uh, but then valuations may start getting impacted once if, if the you know, if the situation veers towards further tightening. So I think uh, interesting here it's going to be. All right, uh, you know, let's talk about uh, crude prices as well, right? I mean, we've seen uh, prices hit ninety dollars at one point in time. There were concerns that we could retest those hundred levels as well. But now, uh, you know, the situation between Iran and Israel seems to be easing, and you know, concerns of a, a full-blown war have receded for now. But OMCs, you know, here on, uh, how do you, or how would you uh, look at the OMC space? Because we've had a fuel price cut as well, but OMC shares remain uh, uh, reactive to how crude prices are behaving right today as well as i mentioned crude has come down below 90 dollars uh, and uh, you know omc is clearly uh, outperforming in today's market so uh, do you do you see more legs to this rally in the omc pack or do you uh, do you uh, expect sell on rise to kick in here on the omcs will always be you know a trading uh, kind of a sector i do not see any structural upsides unless there is privatization uh, which was the hope a few years ago, but that seems to be, you know, in the background. So, unless there is privatization, I don't see consistent value addition by the OMCs. Uh, they will always be subject to government vagaries of, you know, price controls, etc. So, this sector will always be a trading bet. Uh, there are situations when they get so cheap in terms of price to book, etc. When everything is negative, marketing margin is negative, refining margin at the bottom, and then they become, you know, very cheap on a price to book basis. So, that's probably a good trading uh, buy at that time. And then, of course, if it goes to one or above in terms of price to book and, you know, go for five or six in terms of P, then they, becomes a, then they become a sell. So, I never consider this sector as a strategic long-term board. Hmm. What about metals? Uh, you know, steel stocks have had a decent run, uh, you know, over the last one month or so. And, uh, you know, globally as well, uh, the commodity prices have seen an upswing. 
Uh, will the enthusiasm last uh, and could earnings provide a fillip to uh, steel pack? Uh, they could because it, as we as we discussed, uh, growth in the US has surprised and there is some sliver of hope coming from China and China of course is the largest uh, commodity consumer. Uh, so, there, uh, the stocks have been beaten down to quite some extent. Uh, so, there is a case for uh, some kind of a re-rating uh, if growth, growth uh, in the US and China continue. India anyway is going very well. Uh, and Plus, uh, you know, there is also the situation where Russian, uh, uh, you know, uh, production and Russian exports can get impacted if there are further sanctions. So, there are some, you know, uh, at least short term factors which can be positive for commodities in general. Okay, uh, let's shift focus to the IT pack, right? Uh, TCS has reported a decent quarter record, deal wins, margin ha margins have been good, but modest uh, revenue growth is, is something that, uh, you know, uh, perhaps could have played a little bit of spoil spot for TCS. Uh, a similar uh, uh, performance is expected from Infosys as well. Uh, according to our poll, revenues are expected to decline for a second straight quarter. You know, most of the fund managers I speak to have said that, you know, one should wait it out for a couple of uh, quarters before getting into IT. Would you take the same view or would you take a contrarian view and say that, you know, of course, we are expecting recovery from the second half of FY25. So, now is a good time to enter. IT, in my view, probably will go to the pre-2020 growth levels, which is high single digit, low, low double digit kind of uh, growth numbers. Uh, the the 22, 25 percent growth that we saw in 21, 22, 23 was more of an exception. Uh, that was more of bunching up of uh, or acceleration of IT spending in the US and Europe. Uh, but uh, after that bunching up has happened, I think we are back to the old trajectory of high single digit, low double digit. So I think, relatively speaking, the domestic sectors are likely to do much better. So IT for me would be a you know underweight uh, for the foreseeable future. All right, underweight on IT. Uh, but you know, I want to ask you your thoughts on the Vodafone FPO, right? Is it? It's the largest FPO uh, by any Indian firm. We've seen, uh, you know, in interest from global investors. Names like GQG have invested. So you know, it is hinting, uh, you know, strong demand uh, for the FPO. But uh, of course, it will, uh, you know, address the near-term uh, cash flow issues. But on a uh, from a longer-term perspective, uh, do you think this FPO can revive the fate of Vodafone idea? I can't comment on individual stocks, you know, uh, so I have to skip that question. But from an industry standpoint, of course, the chances of duopoly, uh, you know, uh, uh, situation, you know, that could be averted now post the fundraise? Uh, certainly, and you can see some uh, improvement in the customer profile as more investments go into 4G and 5G uh, based on this. So, to, to that extent, I think it's more of a, a continuation of the industry, no, no further disruption. Uh, if if one player had gone down, then probably we would have been in a global situation. May or may not be, you know, uh, good for the longer term. But this at least ensures continuity. And the sector has a lot of operating leverage. And we are seeing a gradual upgradation of uh, uh, ARPUs uh, on a monthly basis. So to that extent, I think the se sector will be a good operating leverage play going forward. And, you know, uh, it, it, we should treat it more as a consumer sector. And depending on the consumer sentiment, I think we should uh, look at this sector. All right. Uh, and what are your expectations from FMCG uh, in the fourth quarter? Of course, uh, uh, IMD has predicted an above normal monsoon. So, do you think here on consumer staples could see some bit of rebound going into uh, uh, FY25? Indications are not that great even now. Uh, we are still talking about low, low, low single digit uh, volume growth number for the sector. Uh, plus, there is some uncertainty regarding uh, commodity prices also. There may be some raw material, uh, uh, you know, raw material price hikes uh, uh, going forward. So, the, in the short term situation does not seem to be that, uh, that rosy for the FMC sector. You know, a last question really, uh, you know, of course, there, there have been a lot of talks surrounding Tesla's entry into India, right? And, uh, you know, we are expecting an announcement as early as next week. Uh, so, we've seen auto ancillary stocks do very well. You know, some of them have rallied in excess of 5%, uh, you know, in a week's time. Uh, but given the fact that an increasing number of Tesla cars are now using components made in India, you know, the likes of Motherson, Sona, etc. are, you know, among the suppliers. Uh, should one play the auto theme via auto ancillaries now, especially since uh, two-wheeler stocks have already seen quite a bit of a run-up? I think we can play both OEMs as well as uh, auto ancillaries. Uh, uh, this is one sector which is in the discretionary space uh, domestically and also into exports on a global basis and plus 
it also forms part of the make in india and the you know uh, uh, you know china plus one uh, kind of a, a strategy so i think the auto and auto ancillary sectors both have good long term tailwinds behind them so we should look at all the segments i would say don't need to be really that picky and choosy okay uh, last question really uh, how are you viewing the entire specialty chemicals basket are you seeing any green shoots there would you uh, invest in uh, you know this space uh, anticipating the china plus one thing to play out here certainly because uh, while i am not seeing any green shoots or major uh, increase in margins in the immediate future uh, but lot of the leading companies have already invested in lot of volume growth so i would bet on volume growth and since valuations have come down quite sharply for a lot of these uh, specialty chemical companies they do make a compelling case uh, even if you don't assume any market margin improvement the volume growth for the next 2 to 3 years itself should be quite healthy so it's certainly a sector worth looking at All right. Uh, with that, Meher Bora, uh, thanks a lot for taking out time and joining in this morning and sharing your thoughts with us. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Well, with that, let's go back to Chandan, who's been waiting by very patiently. Chandan, let's take up some viewer queries that are trickling in this morning. On that note, uh, Meeda wants to know your thoughts on an HUL. Uh, she's bought HUL at two thousand two fifty seven, and she wants to know if she should hold, uh, you know, at least till the results are out. or should she, uh, should, uh, should she exit at the current juncture of course uh, you know uh, fmcg stocks have been uh, witnessing time uh, correction so to say today of course some bit of uh, a green take on the screen when it comes to some of the fmcg names uh, hul should she exit or should she wait it out for the numbers to come out uh, if you look at the hul the major the immediate structure is negative the stock is continuously falling down from last 4 weeks and we have noticed that most of the fmcg stocks are under pressure where upside seems to be kept So I think uh, we can wait for some bounce to exit the positions. As of now, the hurdle is near twenty three hundred. If any bounce comes near twenty three hundred, position can be exited here. All right, that's the view. Hope that answers your query on an HUL. Uh, the next query is coming in from Yavar Bhatt. Wants to know your thoughts on Tata Motors for the long term. Now this talk over the last one month hasn't done much. Although uh, you know, of course, it has seen a stellar run over the last one year or so. uh but uh, for the long term what is the kind of target you'll be watching out for here yes uh, we are positive on the selective auto name especially when you talk about tata motors or we like escort as well so first if i talk about tata motors uh, major support is at 975 it has completed its consolidative move and slow and steady the first leg of rally could be seen so with support of 975 one can look for an upside move to us 1065 in higher levels even uh, we like escorts one of the strongest counter has given a consolidation breakout and positive setup is clearly visible on the lower time frame we have seen some built up of long position so one can buy now with support of 3250 for an upside move to us 3250 level so apart from tata motors one can also look at the escort for positive momentum as well all right uh, that's the view then uh, on tata motors of course escorts is one uh, other stock that you can look at the next query is coming in from kavya uh, you know bought alkyl amines at the price of 4100 Wants to know if uh, you know uh, she should hold or exit. Uh, what would you advise? So Alkaya Mine, uh, I'll suggest to keep the support near 1985. If someone is holding, put the support near 1985, and we are expecting a bounce to us 2220 in the store. All right, watch out for those levels mentioned by Chandan. Chandan, uh, another stock that I want your thoughts on is SBI. uh navin wants to know your thoughts on this stock uh on the charts now uh, how is this stock poised uh, within the psu banking pack so uh, we have seen some profit booking in the bank nifty and most of the private banks and few psu banks were finding selling pressure but sbi one of the strongest counter uh, it is holding well above its 50 day exponential moving average we have noticed some put writing at uh, 750 and lower strike so i believe the support of 7 or uh, 45 could act as a Key level to see the recovery to us say one ninety five to eight hundred zone in the stock. All right, that's the view on an SBI. Uh, Rakhi has written in, wants to know your thoughts on an SJVN. Uh, she's bought the stock at one thirty five. She wants to know if she should wait or exit. Making a bit of a loss here. Uh, you know the stock has seen intermittent. Uh, corrections uh, on the way but uh, in the last one month or so it has given uh, positive returns uh, after coming under fair bit of correction because last quarter the numbers weren't all that green and great and the stock had uh, seen a fair bit of correction after the numbers uh, so 
making a slight loss here, what would you advise her to do? I think um, one can hold here with support of 120. Looking at the price structure, we are expecting a run up to us 137. Okay, that is the view then on SJBN. But one uh, query on Zomato. Akshay Kumar has written in, wants to know your thoughts on Zomato. Of course, Zomato has seen a stellar sumptuous rally. But uh, on the charts, do you think it is looking a, uh, a bit, a tad bit overbought now? Uh, we are quite positive in the counter from last 5-6 uh, months and it has been continuously working high tops, high bottom. So, already we have seen a recent run up all the way from 65. 50, 60 rupees to around 199 levels. So, major trend is intake, but a small bounce, a uh, small decline could be bought. So, if someone is looking to buy the Jumato, can wait for a decline to as 170, 8 to 180. So, that can be the right area to buy the counter, and overall, we are expecting a run up to as 199 to 210 in the stock. All right, expect levels of 199 to 200 on a Zumato. The next query is coming in from. Uh, K Naga wants to know your thoughts on a Quest Corp. Now, this stock has seen uh, a very good traction. In fact, over the last one month, the stock has gained nearly 20 percent. Uh, should one sell on rise or should one hold on? So, here one can hold technically speaking on monthly chart. It completed a rounding formations. In fact, three, four days back, we have seen decent trading and delivery volume. So, one can hold with support of 570 overall. We are expecting a run up to us 640 to 650 level in the counter. Uh, okay, that's the view on Quest Corp. You can hold on. Uh, uh, talking about defence stocks, right? On in Tuesday's session, defence, uh, you know, stocks were outperforming, uh, especially for MTA Tech. What is the view? Satvika Ranganathan wants to know. Yes, we have positive view on uh, defence name, uh, especially when you talk about HL, BDL, and MTA Tech. MTA Tech has uh, from the bottom after the corrective move of last a uh, couple of months. It has from the bo bottom near. Uh, 1650 and recent bottom is uh, formed at 1780 level. So, I believe recovery could be shared. One can look for an upside move to us 2050 to 2100 level. All right, expect levels of 2000 to 2100 on MTAR Tech. Hope that answers your query. The next query is coming in from Abhishek Singh. Wants to know your thoughts on a Jyoti CNC. This stock is uh, witnessing a good, good up move in today's session. Uh, off late, it came under some bit of correction, but over the last one month, it has rallied 20 percent. Uh, here, would you expect levels of 800 anytime soon? Yes, one can hold with support of 720 and I believe this rally could extend to 800 to 842 level. All right, uh, that is the view. Uh, well, with that, I think we have come to the end of the query segment. Uh, Chandan, thanks a lot for taking our time and joining in and uh, you know addressing all of your queries and taking us through your views on a whole host of uh, stocks. Uh, wish you a good trading day and look forward to interacting with you sometime soon. Well, with that, let us see what the markets are doing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they are cruising along. We have snapped out of a three day losing streak. Uh, 22,200 holds uh, on the screen, 73,184 is where the Sensex is at. Uh, even the bank Nifty uh, has snapped out uh, of Tuesday's losses. It is up somewhere on 200 points or thereabouts. Metals as a pack doing well. BPCL, by the way, is the top Nifty gainer. But with that, completely timed out on this edition of Opening Bell. Of course, have a good trading day. Thanks a lot for tuning in. But you guys stay tuned uh, to Money Control for all your other news and updates. And of course, don't forget to catch uh, the Vodafone CEO's interview at 10 a.m. right here on Money Control.